I'm temporarily muting all of you so that there is no disturbance inside when I'm working and I share my screen. Please give me a thumbs up if you can see my screen and hear me clearly. Dr. Gajanan, I can see your camera is on. Please give me a thumbs up if you can see my screen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, guys, welcome to the third webinar of the day. We started at 7 a.m. in the morning with the senior citizen session. We followed it up with the afternoon session for women. Of course, now it is the kids' time or the family time. I know many of you are sitting with your kids. Uh, with, may, please feel comfortable to switch on your cameras. Let's make it a two-way conversation. Of course, when I end, I'll be giving you ample time to ask your doubts, ask your queries in the end. So as usual, we are beginning on time. And as usual, my first slide is always thanking the Lord Almighty who's given me much more than what I deserve. And big thanks is due to this man, courtesy, which we are all are celebrating the day of education twice a year on 12th of August and 30th of June. Thank you, dad. Miss you always. Trust me, guys, whatever I'm telling you from the clinical part of finance, it's courtesy him only. I may be having my MBA finance with me. You all know my bio that I wouldn't be spending time over here. But whatever I learned about, learned about clinical finance and personal finance and the banking, because my father was the king of banking, I would say. He worked in bank for 34 years before he took a VRS in 2001. So what experience he had to share with me, what I, you can say, learned over the next 20 years through my own research. And it is not a theoretical research. It was a practical research where I literally, you can say, knew the CBS or the core banking solution of almost every bank. Now things are getting updated and even I am trying to do that, but I'll tell you a few basic things from the core, which I know about the banking. So this is the session that we are having the third session of the day, Zoom webinar live and only one agenda after this is pending at 10 PM, which I will unveil in the group uh, later tonight. All the, you can say pre-decided agenda is over now. So this is the financial literacy for kids. Of course, anyone above eight years can attend. Somebody asked me in the group, uh, sir, we want to attend. Can we attend? I said, I specified minimum eight years, not the maximum age. So you all are welcome. Your kids' friends are also welcome. Most, most welcome. Because I believe financial literacy should reach everyone in this country. We should never be bereft of uh, such kind of knowledge which is a day-to-day -day knowledge. Unfortunately, our education system is broken. It does not prepare us for the real world. We spend billions and billions or rather not billions, at least millions or lakhs and crores on meaningless education, which may be domain specific, but it does not prepare us for the real world. The real world education is actually beyond your college life. People are standing clueless outside the college once they pass out. No knowledge of documentation, no knowledge of finance, no knowledge of management, and they don't know where to start, how to start. Just trying to bridge that gap in some way or the other. So this is financial literacy for kids section. I'll be detailing a few things in a very, very basic and a simplified way. So that is the reason I told you to make notes because maybe even after a lot of simplification, you may not be getting clarity in a few matters, but still, I would uh, encourage you to ask questions which are not clear to you at the end. So this is the mini day of education is a tribute to my late father. And of course, we'll be having another mini day of education uh, on 12th of August as well, uh, which is almost one and a half months from today. So let's begin the financial literacy for kids session. And when we talk of the basics or even the financial literacy part, what are the four Pointers, I say, everyone should know the basic finance, the terminologies, the banking basics, the taxation basics, the investment basics. Normally, three and four in detailed version are taken my full-blown workshops, but the basics are for everyone to understand before that. Basic finance, the basic terminology like credit, debit, and all those things, they are pretty much clear. I, I think you can guide your kids better in that. So I'll be taking up topic number two today, which is the banking basics. And I'll be dealing a lot many aspects for the kids because we need to expose our kids to the banking system. 
as soon as possible, as early as possible, because they will be needing that spare. Of course, I myself very rarely physically go to bank these days, only for cash deposit. Even for that, I have a I have doorstep banking with me. But still, there are aspects of the of banking in your name offline, you still need to do effects online. I've been doing except cash deposit, as I said, and that too, and uh, wherever possible, those type banking helps me in that. So let's begin the banking basics today. Not many of us know. I'm sorry, I was disconnected, I guess. Uh, let me share my screen again. So if you can hear me and see my screen clearly, please type LC in the chat box. Okay, thank you. So as I was saying, uh, people are not aware of banking basics. So we all need to know about it. Even if we, even if I, as I said, we don't go to banks daily these days, but the same thing is, uh, is the screen not visible? Uh, Dr. Jarvi, please send us, check at your end because people are typing LC. They can see the screen and hear me clearly, I guess. So please uh, check it out. I was disconnected for a minute. It has been disconnecting. You can say ever since morning today, it's been raining heavily here. So never mind. Okay, thank you. So even if we don't do the offline, we need to do the same things online. So I always suggest before you even get into taxation part, even you get into the investment part, you need to know about the banking basics, which are absolutely necessary for each and every one of us because people don't know. And what you don't know, you don't know. You don't take advantage of that also, which the things which are available, visible in that sense. So now, if we start with the banking, people just know savings account and current account. People know savings account means we go and deposit over there. Current account is for the business persons. There are so many accounts other than that. There is a kid's account. There is a no frills student account. There is a female account. There is a senior citizen account. So what all these and other than that, for business purposes, there are OD accounts, which is known as overdraft limit accounts, where you can take a credit over there. So the kids account means the minimum balance things don't apply. Now, every savings account and current account come with a minimum set of basics and they differ from bank to bank. When we talk of bank to bank scenario means some banks would have a minimum balance of 3,000, some would have 5,000, some would have 10,000. On an average, all the nationalized banks are in the range of two to 3,000 minimum. And nowadays they don't count it quarterly balance. They count it not AQB or not average monthly balance, EMB. They count it as ADB, average daily balance. That is what they count. That is how the calculations are done. State Bank raised its limit recently and then they again pulled it back. They have a different uh, uh, ratio or different, uh, you can say, range for metros, semi-metros and uh, non-urban or the village areas. So in the mm, semi-metros, like tier two cities, tier three cities, the range is close to 3,000 uh, per month or day. That is the required, which means, for example, if the balance limit is 3,000 and there are 30 days in a month, what does that mean? 3,000 into 30, 90,000. Oh, so, uh, yeah, 3,000 into 30, 90,000. You keep 90,000 for one full day and for the rest of the days, you can keep a zero balance, which means your average will be close to 3,000. This is just to give you an example 
it does not mean you have to do it in this way so you have to stick to that now in kids account the range is different the kids account comes with 2500 balance 3000 balance 5000 maximum most of the kids account are with 2500 balance no frill student account is usually with the college people or college students it is usually a zero balance account you don't need to maintain any balance you can have as many entries as you want then female accounts are not from all banks but they usually in the private banks they come with different mahila mitra account uh, uh, mahasajini account there are different names in different banks not all banks will have it but majority banks uh, are now inculcating that product this is a product from the banking industry only so they're inculcating that product in the repertoire and the senior citizen account is available with everyone so in senior citizen there are a few advantages not from the balance point of view yes a few banks have a balance point of view also but mostly they have the you can say for example the sms facility if it is chargeable for uh, normal people below 60 years of age for senior citizens it is not chargeable so there are different types different banks and the different balance requirement is there normally private banks will have the range of you can say minimum 10000 balance in the savings account for a normal savings account for anyone in the range of 18 years to less than 60 years that is what we call a normal adult below 18 it is considered a minor and that is falls in the category of kids account now kids account again is not from all banks some banks have that specially otherwise most of the banks will have a under guardian savings account that is the way things work in most banks now we all know there are two types of major banks private banks and nationalized banks nationalized bank used to be 21 22 in number now they have been condensed into 13 or 14 banks private banks they are close to around 30 35 banks in india the total of all these banks is was close to 60 or 70 or so of course not the branches the bank types all over india there are, is a third category which is known as a cooperative society but they also name themselves as bank they are actually not banks majority 99 percent of them are not recognized by rbi so they are not covered by the insurance which the rbi offers to every individual now what is that insurance that is insurance is by dicgc deposit insurance credit guarantee corporation dicgc which means uh if the bank you can say flops or the bank uh bolte na, bank doob jata hai. so then you are insured for up to five lakhs now this amount was one lakhs pre-covid it came to light during covid only when yes bank fiasco happened just before covid it happened on 5th of march 2020 i remember i was having a family dinner and my, it was my brother's birthday and he mentioned boss yes bank doob gaya he said what what's wrong no problem in that these days bank doobte nahi hai they are either merged amalgamated or coerced or taken over by another bank or i can say acquired by another bank so this is the way banking system works in india I hope you are clear with savings account, current account, kids account. Yeah, current account I didn't tell. So current account is basically dealing with the number of transactions. Mostly basic current account with all the banks, be it private, be it nationalized, they come with a minimum 10,000 rupees balance. Again, that is the average daily balance. That much amount you have to maintain. A good private bank will offer you a good account, current account starting from 25,000. They don't sometimes even have a 10,000 rupees product. They are updating themselves, but national bank, you will get a 10,000 rupee product. Now the basic difference between savings and current account is saving accounts come with a range of IBTs, which we call as in branch transactions. Now, what are in branch transactions, a deposit and a withdrawal. These are IBTs. Whether you go to bank to make a online transfer like rtgs imps neft what are those i'll come to that don't worry so whatever transactions you go on to make that those are not counted under ibts what transaction you make through your atm they are not counted through your ibts ibts only stand for 
in branch transactions and usually most of the banks have put a limit since almost 5 6 years now they allow 4 to 5 ibts deposit and removal I mean withdrawal so if you are not uh, if you are going beyond that limit you will be charged a certain amount normally people don't use that thing if you are having multiple transaction you need to you can say again and again deposit and withdraw then current account is the solution for you usually current accounts don't have a limit you can do as many transactions in a month there is no bar on that but now again some private banks have started coming with a limit of 15 20 30 transactions not all a very few of them have coming are coming up with a limit on the current account in that case so i hope it is clear so far different accounts different uh, is a balance requirements different charges different ibts and different uh, you can say mode of operation uh, for example a nationalized bank like uh, pnb if you open up account it's just across the road uh, if you there the minimum requirement balance is 500 rupees if you have a checkbook linked account yeah that you require a checkbook in your account then your minimum balance is 1000 rupees there is one other category which is not applicable to us which is applicable to the migrant labor and it was publicized during the demonetization phase more although it existed before that also which is known as the jan dhan khata which was meant for the poor people or the migrant people it was basically to encourage that every indian citizen should have a bank account it you can say got a boost during demonetization in november 2016 but after that it lost interest many of people you can say became redundant the accounts did not carry forward it happens now let's come to how many holders now when i'm discussing all these things i am discussing all these in the purview of a savings bank account you can have usually maximum up to four holders some banks allow up to five but mostly 3 or 4 upper limit is usually 4 holders in a bank account the mode of operation can be singly e by s jointly f by s or a by s now what are these singly means single person will operate usually the first person e by s applies to a joint account joint account means with two holders e by s and f by s e by s is either or survivor f by s is former or survivor now when the holders increases to 3 or 4 then a by s anyone or survivor again there is a fifth option also you want that everyone should sign on the check book then only the operation should be done it is all, it is all our money then jointly is the option everyone should sign even there are three holders four holders five holders if allowed in the bank up to four i have done myself five i did not try but i have uh, i have the knowledge that five people are allowed in a few banks now in banking language in itr language even if the bank account has three four five holders the money belongs to the first holder means the liability jo इंटरेस्ट आएगा वट एवर इंटरेस्ट यू गेट इन दैट बैंक दैट इज काउंटेड अंडर द आई टी आर ऑफ द फर्स्ट पर्सन इवन इफ द मनी बिलोंग्स टू ऑल इवन इफ द मोड ऑफ ऑपरेशन इज ज्वाइंटली मीन्स ऑल हैव टू साइन इवन देन द फंड बिलोंग टू द फर्स्ट होल्डर लाइबिलिटी वाइज रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी वाइज आई टी आर वाइज ओके ना वेन वी टॉक ऑफ दीज थिंग्स वी नीड टू रिमेंबर that if it is a normal case is a joint account two people husband wife you can say son and uh, uh, son and daughter siblings or father and daughter or father and uh, son or mother and daughter mother and son multiple combinations can be there so whenever you open a new account mostly if you don't specify these days under the guidelines of rbi the account is automatically set to e by s unless specified otherwise means out of the two either or survivor either can operate that now there is a terminology known as privileged banking i mentioned if you remember i mentioned about 
doorstep banking. Different banks have a different name for their privileged banking. Privileged banking means you keep a certain amount of balance. For example, 5 lakhs in your account, you maintain that balance. You don't need the funds. You have maintained a 5 lakh plus balance or 2 lakh plus balance. Again, it varies from bank to bank. And they have sometimes gold, silver or bronze type variants. Not exactly this name. They come with different names. They have uh, these kind of variants. For example, 2 lakh is the bronze variant. 5 lakh is the silver variant. 10 lakh minimum balance is the gold variant. Like that. Even sometimes there is a 20 lakh limit also. So the more you get in that higher level, silver, bronze or gold, you are accorded facilities by the bank. There are lesser charges. The ch only charges that apply uh, usually are the ones that if you don't maintain your balance, you will be applied minimum charges. Usually the other charges are waived off like SMS charges, like draft charges, demand draft. Whenever we have to make a payment to someone, those charges are waived off. Plus locker rental is on a discounted price. And there are so many other things also. Now, this is where in the privileged banking also, you get a doorstep banking option. For example, in my banking in IDFC, uh, IDFC First Bank, I'm allowed five transactions of doorstep in my variant of account. I'm allowed five transactions per month. That bank person will come to my house, collect the cash or whatever service I want. They'll come to my doorstep, give me that service and I will not be charged anything for it. Now, RBI has introduced this thing in the senior citizen sector for people who are disabled. You can say physically challenged. That is a facility for them under any variant. The RBI introduced it last year only. But under for a normal person, normal person and I mean 18 to 60 years of age, it means that they are offered these facilities at the cost of maintaining a certain balance in their account. Now, the next in this category is family bank. For example, you open your account, your wife opens your account, your mother opens your account, your father opens your account, your brother opens your account, your kids open their account. So they have banks, many of the banks now, especially private. Normally, nationalized banking are not having this facility of privileged or family banking. So most of them, maybe a couple may be having. So family banking, you open up uh, all the family members account, minimum three to four or minimum five sometimes, depending upon the bank are required. You maintain the group balance or you can say average balance in one account. For example, your total uh, some relation with the bank is 10 lakhs. Okay, for your five accounts. You opened up a privileged kind of a bank and you said, okay, it is a two lakh per uh, person account. We will be accorded certain facilities in that. And you maintain 10 lakh in one account. For example, I maintain 10 lakh in my account. Above that, my rest of the banks can have a zero balance in the family. Bank. Even if, even if they come with a limit of two lakh per account, this is the advantage of family bank. And usually family banking also enjoys all the facilities like the privileged bank. Again, keep on varying from bank to bank, but this is the way they give that. Now, some banks don't have a family banking. They have a grouping facility. For example, Yes Bank, for example, FinCare Small Bank, Small Finance Bank. They have that grouping facility that they will allow all your accounts opened separately at different times to be grouped under one customer ID. And that one account needs to maintain balance. So, they, you can say different names, different facilities for different people. So this is the way things go. I hope it is clear. So then what is your identification in the bank? It can be customer ID. It can be customer relationship number, CRN, CID, or your customer information form, CIF. Different names or in banking language in certain bank, for example, HDFC bank, they call it cust ID. You can have different names. All of them mean the same. Cust ID, CIF, customer information form, customer identification ID, customer relationship number, they all mean the same. Now, pre-2014 or 15, before late Mr. Arun Jaitley became the finance minister, people acted smart. There were so many loopholes in the banking system, which you can say everyone or who was aware made use of it. 
Even I have made use of those loopholes. And yes, a few loopholes are still remaining. So we we have to be aware for that. People used to open, for example, uh, I am living in area A. My uh, my adjoining area is area B, area C. I can have a different, uh, for example, SDFC bank is in all those areas, A, B, and C. I can go to branch A, open up my account, then go to branch B, open up another account, then go to branch C, open up another account, where I keep the balance divided in a form. Now, in 2015 or 14, this facility was introduced whereby it was all the customer IDs of one customer were merged. That is where, when, how could they be detected? Because Aadhaar and PAN came into being. Firstly, Aadhaar was not mandatory at that time because it had just begun its journey in India. Of course, it was launched during the Manmohan Singh government, but it actually took, took action after the demonetization or just prior to that, it came into being. Now, Aadhaar is the primary document, the most important document for each one of us. One of us, uh, any one of us who doesn't have an Aadhaar number actually does not exist in this country, in, in reality, in that sense. He may be physically existing. Now, what they introduced in 2014 was the duplication of IDs or a merger of cust IDs. For example, I'm having my account in A, B, and C banks. I get a letter from the bank or a message or a mail from the bank. You, with a similar PAN number, we have found three different accounts. Please specify which account you want to keep by this date. If you decide, uh, if you decide by this break, uh, uh, can you hear me uh, or is there any disturbance from my side? Dr. Charvi saying some voice is breaking. Is it okay? Is it loud and clear for everyone? Because I'm sitting almost right on the top of the modem. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Charvi, please check at your end. Thank you. So they introduced a merger of the CUST ID facility. Deduplication that you decide which cust ID you want to keep, in which bank you want to keep. You were given a time of one month, one and a half month, depending on that time. And if you don't pick till then, they would choose a default as per their system and allot you one and merge all your IDs. You still can have, you still can have three different accounts, but they will be counted as one bank entity. Now, what people used to do. At that point of time, FDRs used to be non-taxable. Then the taxable limit was introduced in 2014 for the FDs, uh, uh, for the RD, sorry. FD was taxable since the beginning. So the recurring deposit was taxing. It is kind of a can say deposit only where you deposit some amount every month. So in the recurring deposit became taxable in 2014-15. They actually, people said, people have kept different RDs in different accounts. Now, all of them were merged. That interest from here, interest from here, interest from here will be clubbed together under one ID, under one PAN number. So, actually, people were making use of the system to evade tax. This was, they can say, done long time back. Even now, people believe that uh, you can deduplicate these things. It's not possible. Now, Adar and PAN are centralized. And uh, you can say all these locations have become unified and in one place. Now, there is a know your customer thing, KYC, where you have to tell to the bank that I am alive. KYC is due. Normally, two to three years is the standard time specified by RBI. Although RBI says three years, but banks start their process in two years time. Say your KYC is due, your KYC is due, and and many of the people also make uh, these kind of uh, you can say uh, these kind of efforts to you can say go on the task of uh, opening up uh, fraud calls also in that regard. Okay, so now there are advantages of both family and privilege. I've already told you for the charges part, for the facility part. Now one of the most important things which people are not aware. There is a nomination facility. Now it is mandatory in most of the accounts. You have to opt for a nomination facility. Now the saving accounts opening form or even the current account opening form will have a DA1 form attached to it. Now DA1 is that you have to nominate someone 
in your bank account or in even your mutual fund even whatever instrument you are investing in nomination has been made, made mandatory by most of the regulatory authorities now whatever you nominate for example you want to nominate your family member you have a joint account you want to nominate your son and daughter or maybe your brother your mother or anyone uh, in your account to be whatever nominee you make it will be considered da1 will be considered a default one some time back means pre 2019 or 20 the da1 form had to be attached separately and usually bankers forgot that and nomination was not a big thing now nomination form da1 is attached mandatorily now there are three codes da1 da2 da3 okay so da2 means that you have the nomination and you want to cancel it da1 is you give da2 is cancel it da3 is you want to change it you did a nomination you said i nominated my brother now i want to nominate my mother brother mother two different from brother just an example anyone from from a to b or b to c you want to change then you need to ask for a da3 form i must place it on record unfortunately so many bankers also don't know about da2 and da3 and that is the pitiful system that is the pitiful you can say education system we talk of incompetent doctors incompetent lawyers there are incompetent people in every sphere be it banking be it any profession there will always be good students and bad students so if you are doing your homework properly you are a good student okay so clear about da1 da2 da3 now account a account b account white versus black pre 2015 people used to think ye mera a account hai ye mera b account hai ye mera white account hai ye mera b account black account hai i don't show it in my itr so this is my this is my account which is not known to itr now itr after the aadhar pan linking which is going on since 2018 now to make it mandatory make it mandatory 2019 you can say they actually made it a deadline now that still the deadline is being extended now it is being extended at some cost at some cost you have to pay 1000 rupees or 2000 rupees whatever is the charge i don't know so to link your pan and aadhar after the due date the due date has been extended n number of times income tax language has simple answer to people who believe ki mera ye white ka account hai ye mera black ka account hai we know what you know period finish end of debate if you believe ye account maine itr mein show nahi kiya unko sab pata hai they'll ask you yes dr abc why did not you show this account anyways after the annual information summary ias you are getting these things in in your uh, your saving and trust is being shown over there so there is nothing called as a or b account now each of the bank will give you a free checkbook leaves some banks like sbi charge it for the first time also some banks give first 10 leaves free then they charge it in savings some banks give one you can say one checkbook copy of 10 or 25 usually the copies are in 10 25 50 or 100 that is the ratio but it uh, some of the banks come with 40 also size i think state bank also only comes with 40 size but the standard sizes are 10 leaves 10 leaves is one check is known as the one check leave a leaf so check leaves 10 25 50 or 100 so again very less use these days unless you have to make payments when everything is possible online checks are hardly used but many banks offer it like a facility one checkbook free every quarter one checkbook free every 6 months one checkbook free every one year different variants standard is one checkbook free every quarter that is the standard they use some banks like sbi as i said they will charge a nominal amount 2 rupees 3 rupees per check 40 check leaves means uh, you can say you you will be charged now banks who are offering for example one checkbook free per quarter 
25 check leaves. Now you believe that I have a lot of checks to make payments. I'm not using online. I'm using still check leave by payment. I want a 50 check. Book. They'll send you 50 check, book, but they will charge you the money. It doesn't matter whether you ordered one checkbook in the previous quarter or not. It'll be still there. Secondly, checkbook leaves don't get expired. Even if they are, you can say five years old. I won't say 10 years because ever since the centralized truncated system or the CTS 2010 came into being, all the checkbooks have been replaced by 2015. After 2015, the micro codes are there. I'll show you what are the micro codes. So all those things have changed now. Even if the checkbook is five years old, it is not expired. It is entered in the banking system. And it is not mandatory that you have to go in sequence. You can pick a checkbook leave from maybe the first one and maybe the 10th one, your choice. You can pick any, any check. It is not that it has to go in the serial order. Now, Saving bank, as I said, some banks will still offer a few check leaves free, but some will not. Current, every rupee, every check leave is chargeable. Right from the first also. Privileged, they have better facilities. Maybe you get a bigger checkbook in a quarter. Maybe you have no checkbook charges unless you order more than 100. Nobody will need 100 checkbooks unless you are running a business and doing everything offline in a physical way. Then you will need a bigger checkbook. Otherwise, privilege, they don't, uh, you can say, charge anything. Then current account versus savings account debate. This is for the dentist, basically. So I think this slide uh, accidentally got placed here. It was not meant for kids. So I'll omit this slide. There is already a video on YouTube uh, on this topic. So if dentists who feel uh, they want further knowledge, they can catch up on that video. So now the ATM and the transaction limits. I mentioned about the IBTs or the in-branch transactions. Now ATM further has a different limit. ATM transactions, normally three to five are allowed by every bank in their ATM and maybe two to three or two to five in another bank's ATM. Now, how do you withdraw? You withdraw through a debit card. Pre-2017, there used to be only ATM cards, which means they could not be used for offline e-commerce or online transactions. Then slowly paradigm shift came. Now ATMs are not issued. You, you issued a debit card. ATMs are usually free also with no annual charges by many banks. Ever since the debit card came into being, it is a there is a chip inside. It is, it is Wi-Fi enabled also these days. So most of the banks are charging an annual maintenance charge. You are allowed four to five in your bank, two to five in another bank per month. This is a limit with different banks varies. Now, again, whatever amount you can withdraw depends upon your account variant. We discussed about types of accounts. Whatever limit you have, for example, some say in our ATM, Unlimited transactions, if it is a good variant, if it is a family banking account, if it is a privileged account, if you have a higher variant, you will be offered facilities in the form of transactions and limits. You can withdraw up to 2 lakh per day. Usually a debit card comes with a 25 to 50,000 limit per day, usually. And if you're using the ATM in any other bank than your parent bank, for example, I have an account in IDFC. I'm using the same in, uh, you can say yes bank. My limit for that transaction is rupees 10,000 only. I cannot withdraw with my ATM of IDFC from, for example, my ATM is running out of cash. The banks are together at joining in my area. Actually, they're adjoining the Yes Bank, the SDFC and the IDFC are actually adjoining. IDFC is out of cash. IDFC is out of cash. So I have to go use Yes Bank. So Yes Bank, I go, it'll give me maximum 10,000 per day. Even if I insert it again, It'll say, sorry, you have crossed the limit. So again, those are the guidelines RBI has made to secure that even if you lose your ATM card or debit card, as it is called, and you, you can, somebody tracks or cracks your debit card pin also, then they can't make maximum use of it. Because once anybody withdraws even 10,000, you will get a message immediately. At that point of time, and you will check. Yeah, I have This is the way things go. 
you check it out make a complaint the earlier you make a complaint there are chances that that 10000 will also be refunded to you if you report a card loss early again varies from bank to bank but if you report within uh, 6 to 12 hours usually even you are compensated for that amount also now passbook a passbook is a like a record of your transactions which do which you do majority of the banks give you one of the two options either opt for a statement usually email statement or opt for a physical passbook old citizens pick up passbook you can say many of youngsters or many of the normal citizens they pick up statement physical statement is mostly chargeable by most banks unless it is a privileged account most of the banks are now encouraging green banking so they don't uh, they discourage actually the physical statements now many banks will send you if if you opt for a e statement they'll send you a monthly statement also if you want a quarterly statement they'll send you a quarterly statement also and that is free of cost but you can't have the statement and the passbook facility together that is not allowed the free thing and the paid thing comes into play now the locker where you keep your property papers your important documents or even your jewelry females keep over there locker rentals the rental varies from 1200 to 6000 rupees for nationalized banks nationalized banks are only good in terms of locker their locker rent is on the lower side <laughs> otherwise their facilities and their services are far inferior to the private banks private banks lockers usually start from 3 to 4000 and go up to 6000 even 10000 also they are usually there are three sizes small medium and large a few private banks have an excel size also but most banks have s m and l and the range is for for example the small size comes in uh, 3000 rent per year uh, medium comes in 5000 the big l size comes in 7 to 8000 depend some give a discount on the first year fees some give a female discount also that 25% of the locker fee will be like a cash back every year we uh, we have a locker uh, in uh, my mother's name and my wife's name and we get a 25% rebate in idbi bank that is the way most of the banks function so a uh, locker facility now idbi is a semi private semi government bank 26% of the share is uh, government the rest is private so 51% share was picked up by LIC in IDBI it is actually an LIC bank LIC has not renamed it but 51% of the share belongs to IDBI and very soon IDBI bank would be privatized uh, you can say or that is one of the first banks that will be privatized now sms banking many banks have started charging now for the sms facility you can say even for the daily balance uh, or even for the weekly balance they are charging some amount it varies from for example icic charges per message 10 paisa 20 paisa per message some charge a flat fee 15 rupees per month 17 rupees per month or 15 rupees plus gst per month varies again privileged banking for most banks or family banking for most banks you get the charges waiver over there and uh, you can say even if you don't opt for sms banking all my accounts have been disabled for sms bank usually because i hardly use any atm i or a atm or debit card i have not used a debit card in the past 5 years i guess not maybe once in 5 years past i have not used that so i disable my sms banking even if you disable your sms banking you will still get the otp and those passwords because those are kept in the mandatory list by the rbi my sms banking is usually you can say off but i get a i get a message for the otp for the transactions i make and all my banking transactions are 2fa enabled 2fa means two factor unless i put in the otp none of the transactions can take place so even if i don't get a message i am secured in that regard now check clearing now it is very strange to say 35 40 year old people i have come across they don't know how to fill a check and i'm not talking male or female i'm talking journal people so these days 
there was a time pre 2018 or 19 when checks used to be sent physically for clearing now every bank or at least one bank in the uh, city has that facility where they scan the checks and images are sent and not physical checks which has made it first day for example you deposited the check today if it is before 2 pm or 3 pm that time the check will be taken for clearing the next day it will be credited the next day third day it is for the return if any so the check clearing used to take 3 days the long days now the process is down to two for example one of my banks has a clearing system till 4 pm even if i drop in a check today at 4 pm by 6 pm tomorrow i will get the money in my account if the check is valid and all those factors are clear you can say 26 27 hour process is there kehne ko do din hai 26 27 ghante ka process ho gaya yes the key is to put in on the first day before before the due date or the cut off date of the print so how to fill a check you enter the pay name here now there was a time when you make a cutting make a double writing you just sign over here and the check would be cleared in the past 4 years the rbi has come up with very clear cut guidelines nothing nothing or no change is allowed on the check Even if it is, for example, आपका पेन नहीं चल रहा था आपने चलाते टाइम पहला अक्षर आपका डबल हो गया वो चेक रिजेक्ट हो गया सो so, पेन को पहले खाली कागज पे चला के देख लेन इट ऑफ वेकेंट पीस ऑफ पेपर एंड देन एम टी पीस ऑफ पेपर एंड देन देन फिल इन द चेक मेक श्योर देर इज नो डबल राइटिंग कई बार कोई पेन जो होता है ना बॉल पेन थोड़ी सी इंक छोड़ता है जिसमें आप कर्सिव राइटिंग करने लगते हैं तो उसमें लगता है ऐसे कि आपने ऐसे एल डाला आर डाला समथिंग तो इट पुट्स इन a kind of a double ink that is also counted as an overwriting then the check won't be clear simple name full name you know the person as somebody else you have to put in the number by which the account number is there for example somebody puts in a check of uh, pay pay name bhavdeep ahuja the check won't be clear because my name in my account is bhavdeep singh ahuja okay if i am issuing a check to someone i can sign anyways i sign as bhavdeep ahuja only I, because otherwise my signatures become too long i'm doing this since almost 20 years now so i've not changed my signatures so in sign whatever i want to use i can but the check name has to match now amount in figures amount in words signature here the date these five items in red are mandatory name words amount sign date of issue now this is mentioning for example this is mentioning sadan jain this is a single account if it is a jointly operated account both the holders have to sign both the names will be there if it is a either or survivor account only anyone can sign either or survivor either either whatever you want to call it now below the check there is a six digit number the first six digit number is the check book oh sorry the check number then there is a micro code magnetic ink character recognition code this is for the banking images part then the bank's id with the rbi then the transaction code normally you don't need the third and the fourth bank sometime when you are entering your check online you may need a micro code but mostly you need a check number now check return causes i told you already double writing overwriting cutting nothing is allowed it should be a flowable writing wherever you feel even if you put an extra dot sometimes that is counted as a double writing so be very cautious when filing the check when filling the check okay the check number i have told you will be here you can stop the check you should check to someone you thought that maybe you should a wrong check or maybe you want to change it or maybe you feel that something is wrong you can do a stop check online also offline also go to your net banking internet banking open up and stop the check cautiously these are the few precautions to take and always write at the back the name into which account it is going the account number into which it is going and the phone number yours where you are deposit for example i want to pay to dr abc i put pay name pay dr abc 
a sum of rupees uh, 40,000, 40,000 here, FOR, TY, 1000 only in words here, sign here, date here, all the five things. And on the back, on the back, I will write, I am depositing in his account, for example, here only in this. I will write Dr. ABC's full name, his account number where I'm depositing it and phone number, maybe mine or maybe his. Doesn't matter, make a difference. Usually from the account, it is going to be debited. You have to give that number. Okay. Now imagine the reverse situation. I get a check from someone. He's already written pay Bhavdeep Singh Ahuja. For example, 40,000 only, 40,000 here signed. He has signed it also here. He's put in a date. At the back, I'll put in Bhavdeep Singh Ahuja account number, whatever it is. And below that, my own number. So that whenever the check is returned, they inform me. Okay. So that is one thing you need to take care. Many banks now don't require the voucher to be filled. For this, sometimes a separate deposit voucher, like a check, like a cash deposit voucher, a voucher has to be filled. Many banks have done away with that. Since that is an extra additional paperwork, they say just write the number legibly in the clear format at the back and along with the phone number and go ahead and deposit. But some banks insist, no, 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 voucher, bar ke do, bar do. doesn't make any difference. By, by, you can say, if you are not depositing a voucher, click a photo of the check from front and back. If you're depositing with a voucher, get it stamped where you are depositing with the bank or before even Dropbox. Usually they say Dropbox, mein dal do. they won't give you a stamp also, or maybe stamp, kar denge, it doesn't make any difference. Now, some banks like SBI, like uh, even SDFC, they have check vending machines also. You enter the account to be deposited. You enter your check number also. The barcode is already there. It will identify amount, enter, name, and the check is automatically gone into clearing. Now, the onus is on you to fill the right details. If you don't fill the right details, then it is going to be a problem. Now, a new thing has been introduced by RBI two years back, one and a half year back, positive pay system. Now, whenever you used to issue a check, if it was, you can say it was done firstly to prevent the frauds. Whenever you used to issue a check, people used to get a call from the bank. Aapne ye 50,000 ka, 1 lakh ka, 2 lakh ka, whatever amount ka check issue kiya hai. Haan ji, mene kiya hai. Kisko hiya hai? I have issued it to Dr. ABC. Okay, fine. Thank you. Bye. It is just a confirmation call from the bank that your check has not been stolen and is not being used fraudulently. So the banks introduced a positive system courtesy RBI. Positive pay system, the amount is set, the minimum amount is set at 50,000 rupees, which means that if, if your amount is above 50,000 rupees and you want it to be paid directly, the bank should not trouble you for calling. You enter the positive pay system, uh, go to the online net banking, enter the details of the check issued to whatever <coughs> in the system and you deposit and you okay it on your net banking after filing and confirming it and the bank will not confirm it. Means if you issue a bigger check amount, it will be immediately processed for clearing. Courtesy the positive pay system. Again, it is a check to introduce the fraud, fraudulent things in check. So the regulatory authorities are doing their bit, but we all see that the scammers are always one step ahead of the regulatory authorities. They take such steps before any fraud comes to light. Then they make rules and regulations. By that time, the frauds have already implemented a, another system or another way of fraud. Now, a few tips to before writing a check, write in the way you can say, uh, write in a way which is difficult to alter. For example, this is the wrong way. If you leave a lot of space, Abhay Kumar, you will a lot of space. Somebody can alter it put in a wrong name and the check can be, you can say rejected. Then always, whenever you are giving it to someone, always click these two lines, which means you are crossing the check. Crossing the check means now when I have even, even you can write between that A by C pay, account pay. Even if you don't write, just make two parallel lines like this. If you can see in the image, just to make two parallel lines, that means it is an account pay check, which means this check cannot be used for cash payments. 
nobody can take uh, take a cash payment against this so you need to cross this or mention account pay anyways even if it is not crossed the rbi has given the mandate or the limit at 20000 or 19999 above 20000 it has to be digital that is the as per the rules of the income tax so you can't have it that is why you can say the gift or the other things are above 20000 are to be paid digitally for clinic payments always cross the check above 10000 now this was a thing which we used to do in the past now we are doing everything online so checks are hardly used also sometimes in the whole year i use one or two checks for those people only who say i don't use google pay i don't use paytm because it is a fraud system i'll get defrauded so people have this notion then they don't use it it's okay we give check to them so hardly very rarely used but these are a few things to be used so always use the full name of the person not the slang or not the nickname and always after the check when you write a name add a line or a small cross in between two lines that is the way you can do cancel the word bearer after the check now the check will mention here bearer over there the bearer check means those if a, if it is a cash payment for example amount below 20000 you have not crossed it if you don't click bearer the person whose name is there he will have to come and take the payment not anybody can take it on his behalf if it is a firm name then the managing director has to come so usually you have to cut out the bearer check over over there and then of course ye blank check sirf hindi filmon mein hota tha aaj se 20 saal pehle ab hindi filmon mein bhi nahi hota hai wo bhi kehte hain main online wire transfer i'll do the wire transfer so they also do the wire transfer they also don't give blank checks otherwise the old villains used to give a blank check to the hero to you can say leave their daughter and you can say get away with the money and the hero used to tear off those checks those were good old times of hindi movies a bollywood hi bechara barbaad ho gaya kya karu again a few tips while accepting a check make sure that the check is signed i have seen so many checks where everything is perfect but the signatures are not there i have seen so many checks i have received so many checks why have post also then don't give any post dated checks unless it is for a you can say for a educational thing or for a emi thing even the emi guys don't take post dated checks they they you can say set up their system with the bank eca system is their electronic clearing system wherein your emi is directed every month then no dirty marks on the check it should be clean handwriting should be consistent on all parts no double writing no over writing no space no undue spaces same ink same pen flow no spelling mistakes no tampering on the micro code as i said this is the you can say ink recognition system ink correct recognition which is going to be used for the clearing system no cutting no overwriting no double writing these are a few tips you need to know when you are issuing a check now net banking or internet banking as we say usually uh, the system used to be very robust for kotak bank federal bank sometime before that now every bank has a very robust system all of them require an otp first the password then the otp first the captcha code then the password then the otp and maybe for some time it is a 2fa also federal bank has a special hardware token also it is kind of a device which has a four or five digit number you press it and uh, you have to enter the number and then only you can log in of course if you are traveling and you have not uh, your 2fa with you you can use an alternative in the way of otp also so simple ways to keep your password i'll tell you very simple ways see one thing you need to remember the passwords have to be alpha numeric and caps means you need alphabets also from a to z you need words also from 1 to 9 or 0 to 9 you need uh, you can say special character also like uh, uh, star and bracket percentage whatever you need a caps character also means one letter at least in capital okay so uh, and the password should be minimum eight words so that is the thing so a simple tip to put in a password is for example pick up any word that you like i'll give you an example here uh, for example i will say uh june i'm using the word june june 4 2 4 
star and that inverted v and maybe percentage which is shift 86765 and then maybe followed by any letter in caps p get my point june 4 2 4 3 and then special characters shift 8 7 6 5 then followed by your favorite character this is a way to set a login password so when you have to change it use the next june 5 2 5 3 same special characters same caps character and in your diary you can note 5 2 5 3 4 2 4 3 Six to six three. This way, you are only uh, changing two digits. The rest password is same. A tip to add a transaction password. Same password. June four two four three eight seven six five. Add a special character of four. One character special extra, and again ending with the same caps letter P. This is the way I keep my passwords and it remains with me. I, I just enter in my Excel sheet, the number, for example, four, two, four, three, Baki to Mirko Malo Mena. Yes. Your family members should know it, but nobody can trace what is four, two, four, three. Even if somebody catches hold of that diary or my Excel file, this is the way you can do it. Remember, you have to change it, change both login and transaction. Just two digits only change. Now, some banks like HDFC, like uh, one more, probably, uh, yeah, Yes Bank also. Yes Bank and HDFC will not accept any special character from 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. They only accept 3, 2, and 1. So you can keep the password June 4243. Shift three two one followed by same character, and in your password you can in your password entry you can mention four two four three hyphen three two one. You know it. It is a special character three two one. Where three two one is not there, your special characters are eight seven six five. Just an example. This is a very very simple tip. I've been using it since almost now, at least fifteen years. I would say never created a problem. Yes, I have to change the password, and it is easier to remember. And very, 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 very practical way also. And the continuity also is maintained. And nobody can trace it also. Nobody can track it also. And nobody can, you can say, hack it also easily. Unless you go on telling everyone, oh, my password was this. In a showroom when you're shouting like this, nobody will, you can say, remember that. So 2FA, I told you already, you have to enable that. Then I told you about the online transfers. NEFT, National Electronic Funds Transfer, RTGS, Real-Time Gross Settlement, IMPS, Immediate Payment Service, FT, Funds Transfer, Physical, of course, and Online via Pay Edition. So what is the difference? Now, NEFT is from any amount up to 2 lakhs. From 1 rupee to 2 lakhs, you can do a NEFT. NEFT used to be done in batches of 2 hours. Now it is done in batches of half an hour. In 24 hours, you have 48 batches. Means your account is settled every half an hour. RTGS is for the bigger amounts. Any amount above 2 lakh is to be done via RTGS. Of course, you can do a NEFT also up to 5 lakhs. But above 5 lakhs, it has to be compulsorily RTGS. RTGS is fast and done through RBI directly. So again, transfer that part. IMPS can be done through your phone. Can be done online. That is immediate transfer. NFT ka aadhi ghante mein settle hota hai. RTGS 15-20 minute mein settle hota hai. Sometimes one hour also. IMPS is immediate. NFT is in the physical mode. Funds transfer. You give a check to the bank. Please do the fund transfer. When the check is in the same bank. And mujhe SDFC ka check mila hai. I have the bank account in SDFC only. So transfer it over there. This is fund transfer. Otherwise, wo different bank ka hoga. To wo clearing mein jayega. Online pay edition is where you add a pay, you get a cooling period. Cooling period is you can't make any transaction is that. Some banks have that period of 30 minutes. 
Some banks have a period of one hour. Some banks have that period of two hours. HDFC and SBI have that period of two days, three days, four days. Sorry, not HDFC, SBI and S Bank. They have a cooling period of two to three to four days. And even after the first 24 hours, you can transfer only 25,000 rupees. It is only after the completion of two, three or four days, whatever the limit is there. I think minimum three days is there. So after that, you can transfer as per the limit specified. For example, I have given the limit as five lakh rupees. The maximum limit I specified to transfer to this payee is five lakh. For example, my lab, I've been making regular payments. I can set that limit at maybe one and a half to two lakhs. Never the bill has crossed two lakhs. So we set the payment at bar over there where the online payment is made. Now through net banking, you can file check your 26 AS also, which is your duplicate Janam Kundali. You can do ITR tax filing also. You can verify your return also. You can do a lot many through your net banking. Also many, many banks have enabled these features in your bank, in your internet banking. Now, what else you can do through your internet banking? You can book a FD, you can book a RD, you can buy sovereign gold bonds and many more transactions can be made. You can link your credit card also. You can pay for your credit card also through net banking. Even third party credit cards are allowed. I make my credit card payments through another joint account of mine in, for example, in Indescent account from my HDFC account. Some banks allow a third party addition, some won't allow it. You can even reset your ATM pin through your net banking. You don't need to physically go to the ATM to reset your ATM pin. And again, keep a series of ATMs. If you are using ATM, I, I told you, I don't use ATM hardly. I use it hardly. Once in five years, I've told you that is my frequency. So usually with the digital modes coming in, we either pay digitally or in the online way. We don't need it. And I prefer to do that way also because that way I feel that I'm in the control of finances. Then accept cash default, you can check balance anytime, place service requests. And of course, important uh, part is about the apps. Now, I don't advise major transaction through bank apps. Again, this is my personal viewpoint. You are free to differ from it. Preferably have a view facility only, except for the bank where you keep a low balance and do the transactions online, rest don't pay through apps because phone is a hackable device and it does not have an antivirus protection. It is not secure at all in that sense. We give so many permissions to so many apps, third party apps, you can say any other thing. I'm not really, you can say, convinced about the security feature. So I prefer not to do any big transactions. Yes, small payments, uh, IMPS payments, little uh, volume, not very high ticket size. I prefer to do else I don't. So you all need to know these banking basics. There are many, many more. I told you, gave you the list, maybe some other time. So what is the carry home gyan? I have already overshot my time by about 20 minutes or so. So what is the basic carry home gyan for today? There are a few points which every kids must be taught because this is the important thing about every you can say financial literacy, which is important. Now, what are the 10 points not which are applicable for everyone, not just the kids? Of course, kids need to be taught this. Number one is how to save money, how to keep track of money, how to pay what it's worth for something, how to spend money wisely how to think about money, how to have a positive relationship with money, how to live on a budget, how to invest, how to recognize frauds and scams, how to exercise the entrepreneurial spirit and how to handle credit. Many of these things I have covered, uh, you can say, especially living on budget, living on uh, identifying frauds and scams, I've covered in the morning and the afternoon session also. So I think you would be aware of it, what I've covered. So I would advise you to be financially literate, start with the basics and slowly build on them. And always remember, there is always a step one, two, three before reaching step 10. Rome was not built in a day. Rome was actually built each day. So whether you want to learn or not, whether you consider finance as an important portion of your life or not, I leave that choice to you. It is a personal choice. And I say that line very fondly. It's all about the choices in life 
make sure that you make the right ones. So the moral of the whole story is that financial literacy is an important life skill, which increases financial resistance, promotes saving and financial issues, prevents costly financial errors and fraud, reduces anxiety about out of control finance and cushions the impact of recessions. So the key is the key. The moral is the key. Keep educating yourself. This should not be a dull day, even in your life, even once. So thank you so much for your patient hearing. And just a few announcements. This is my PhD community, only for dentists, of course. Uh, if uh, this is to overcome the DMF index, which we are not taught, the education system is broken. We all know that. Just to reiterate that fact and spread the message in your community, in your area. I want maximum dentists in there. Who can be, who could be benefited from them. And yes, most of this, these WhatsApp uh, messages, uh, you can say these webinars are being happening for my WhatsApp community also. And do spread the message in your friend circle. If anybody wants to be added, they can be added. We have recently consolidated all six groups into two groups now. So my YouTube channel, which has a lot of videos, do subscribe to the channel if you have not already done that. My YouTube channel presence is through my name only, is DR Babdi. And my all social media presence is also through my name, dear Bhavdi, wherever you want to find me, wherever you want to follow. I have content everywhere flowing in. Wherever you feel comfortable, please feel free to follow me. And do send me your feedback. And of course, I know many of you have made notes. So do share your notes for your fellow colleagues as your giveaway for the society, as your giveaway to the dental profession. And of course, if you want to add any feedback for me, please feel free to do so. And... I would request that please do post your takeaways for the benefit of others. And this is the time for questions. I could see a few questions popping up in the chat and I will stop my share to get to the questions. Let me just check firstly from the chat and then they, then maybe then I will uh, take up from the live ones. Uh, Dr. Nilanjan Mitra asks, sir, what if one opens accounts in different banks, wouldn't he still get interest on all the separate accounts? He will still get interest on all the separate accounts. He will do it, but the customer ID will be clubbed under one. It will be hassle for you to maintain all those three accounts and your interest will be clubbed also and clubbed also and it will be counted under your PAN number only, even for all those three banks. In fact, all your saving banks, whatever you have it, will be counted under one at all. Thank you. I hope uh, you get your answer. Dr. Rishike says, can you mention which loopholes still exist? There are a lot many loopholes. You have to enter the banking system, get to the basics. You understand uh, this is a matter which should not be discussed on the platform, I would believe. So don't worry. There are so many which can be done. So Regarding the deduplication of accounts using Aadhaar PAN, what if one opens accounts in different banks? Wouldn't they still get interest on separate accounts? They will still get, get interest on separate accounts. But the only thing is they will be counted under one PAN number in your ITR and they will be displayed. For example, HDFC Bank 1, 2, 3. They'll be all combined. For example, one bank had 100 rupees interest. The second had 200. Third had 500. You will see the entry in your AIS as HDFC Bank for this PAN number. 800 rupees, 100, 200, and 500 added together. So it'll be there. So, but it will be counted under one pan and you can't escape free. People used to have that in different banks when the customer IDs were different, they used to enjoy that facility. East bank may be tax bachaliya, may be bachaliya. After the deep, um, duplication or the merger thing, those things actually lost their favor because government is also smart enough to do that. So, how can I make more money and invest as a kid? Firstly, learn the basics, Tarush. I would encourage you to get acquainted with the basics and start with small little savings. Understand the value of money. Understand the value of budgeting. Analyze and track your spends. Whatever you're spending or earning from your pocket money, do that and try to see if you can have a big purchase coming up uh, in any of your wish list. Save money for that because saving is the first step towards investing. Now, before you save the money, you need to actually know what your spends are, which means you need to budget that. Then you need to track that. And once you track and budget, save it, then only investment will come into picture. And investment is not a 
you can say a uh, one field investment you have to invest in multiple fields for you as a small kid i would advise keep saving the money in your saving bank account which will give you good returns alternatively if you want to get acquainted i would recommend you to open up a sip with your father as a guardian and you can start your sip also even with a minimum sum of 500 rupees per month i hope i answered your question tarush uh what do we mean by dr nimesh asked what do we mean by check bounce and what are the scenarios when these check bounces take place majority of the check bounces take place because of insufficient balance or because of the errors in checks filling which i have notified overwriting spaces double writing cutting whatever usually these are the situations or account number uh, and name are not correct or the date is incidentally for example you mentioned the right date but you mentioned the year as 2022 earlier there used to be a long limit now the checks are valid for a period of 3 months from the date of issue which means if you wrongly enter 29th june 2022 your check is already expired when you signed it so 3 months limit is there earlier it used to be one year then for a long period of time it was 6 months but now it is 3 months since almost about 7 8 years now so 3 months limit is there so mostly checks bounce because of insufficient balance wrong name wrong account number or maybe errors in the filling of the check i hope i answer your question dr namisha thank you dr rajkumar thank you nilanjan thank you dr bindu dr manjot singh says, sir are there any saving scheme for boys are there are for girl child unfortunately no there are lot many schemes for the girl child but nil for the boy child that is the way things go but then the facilities uh, for the boy uh, child are that you can open up a ppf account for them anyways the girl child usually enjoys the the youngsters below 10 years enjoy the sukanya samriddhi only and the elder ones after this budget 2023 enjoy that mahila samman saving certificate it was which is i have not found even a single bank offering it online as yet the a couple of post offices i have i had started it but <coughs> even on the india post office site i have not come across it mahila samman saving certificate and we are already 3 months completed into this financial year so there are two schemes only majorly so kanya samriddhi for the young child and uh, mahila samman that started only today for the adult uh, adult females but nil for the you can say for the male child okay thank you dr surbhi no problem thank you dr divya no problem nanjan that's okay so thank you dr bhavna uh dr rishikesh asks can you tell how frequently our sibil is updated say after repay of car loan normally deletion of the data takes place every 6 months earlier they used to write off certain things but now certain loans are still outstanding after a few time but after the sibil uh, you can say after your repay of car loan the first thing is your sibil should not go down itself because you may be under credit if you are paying your installments on time your sibil does not go down number 1 it is maintained if you miss an installment or do some haragiri on that account maybe then that is altered but if uh, you have paid it regularly through ecs or your post dated checks or whatever way it is updated after 6 months or so in that regard having said that there are two kinds of inquiries on your sibil a soft inquiry and a hard inquiry make sure that you check sibil once in 2 to 3 months only and not hit it every week because once you hit it again and again it it become the multiple soft inquiries become a hard query itself so and hard inquiries when they hit the sibil again and again they are responsible in taking the sibil score down okay i hope i answer your question thank you tarush thank you dr nimisha thank you shruti uh thank you dr shruti so tarush says i'm 11 year old can i start investment as you said with dad with my dad tarush even if you were 11 days old you could start the investment with your dad of course you would not have been able to speak at that point of time so may i please request all of you to switch on your cameras i am i feel like talking to a wall none of the cameras is switched on 
please switch on your cameras so uh, even if you were 11 days old you could do it the only thing is you could not have spoken at that point of time so uh, okay so okay dr pooja says uh, how can i check before investing in a property that any old loans taken are paid or not get them to tell their civil only that is the only thing or tell them to if there were any loans get a clearance certificate from the bank that is the way you can get a uh, clarity on that part or uh, you can say for example uh, uh, i think rishikesh mentioned about the car thing whenever the property is under loan for example car the rc at the bottom mentions hypothecated or pledged which hypothecated means pledged only under loan to this bank when you clear your car loan the first thing is you have to go to the rto office get a form attach the documents attach the old rc and get a new rc that there are very minimum charges i think around 2 to 300 rupees only for that but you get a new rc with that line omitted hypothecated or pledged to that bank so similarly the properties which are pledged to the bank the banks won't issue a clearance certificate for that if there were any issues that there were certificates before that so ask for the clearance certificate from the bank and that is the way i have de dealt with all these aspect dr pooja in my blog also in the buy or the rent series that i took up on fb group phd five part series everything of these aspects what all documents you need for buying for renting all those things are for you guys only so make use of that those blogs they are still there yes thank you dr rishikesh thank you dr pooja any more questions please feel free to unmute yourself and ask i'm here so if there are no questions i'll request only one thing please put your takeaways in the group some of you have attended all three sessions some of you have attended two some of you have attended only one whatever it is please believe in giving back to the society please giving please believe in giving and helping out your colleagues so whether they came here or not whether they were busy or not that should not deter you from doing your duty so think it as your duty of helping out your colleagues so with this we finished the day of education yes a fifth agenda is left uh, i have spe i had specified five agendas for the day and of course i'll be posting that around about 10 o'clock in the group itself so till then till we meet again probably soon probably on 12th of august see you take care bye bye all the best and happy banking happy investing and happy uh, you can say finance awareness to all of you bye bye take care thank you sir